Of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, I welcome you to the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. Our first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 22, verses 19 to 23. Our second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 11, verses 33 to 36. And our gospel reading is taken from the gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. The theme for this reflection will be the confession and blessing of Peter. Brothers and sisters, today's readings are laced with so much meaning about the patriarch ministry of St. Peter and of the Church. In the readings of today, we'll see the role of Peter, especially in the Gospel reading, as to why Jesus Christ will entrust the keys of the Church to him, and also with the promise that whatever he binds here on earth, is considered bound in heaven, and whatever he unbinds here on earth is considered unbounded in heaven. Brothers and sisters, in today's Gospel reading, Jesus will ask his apostles the question, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? The discourse said to be discussed this morning could be seen in three phases. The first phase will see that the question Jesus Christ asks is addressed to the general, to the general, that's to the public. He asks them, who do people say the Son of Man is? And the second part of that question will be, and who do you say that I am? And the third part of that discourse will be addressed only to Peter. To the first question which is asked to them, they will say, they say that you are John the Baptist, and to the second question, and who do you say I am? It will be Peter who will respond at this time. Peter will say, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Brothers and sisters, before we go to the third discourse, let us consider also what this means. The, 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 the meaning of this response and also of this question is very important. The passage itself is a classical portrayal of one of the essential characteristics of Christian revelation, namely that God has chosen to communicate his truth and life to the world through the mediation of human beings. This is important. Hence, human beings are also given the capacity by Jesus Christ to also speak about the good news of Jesus Christ and also to speak about the church which is set to be begun by Jesus Christ. To this, the profound meaning which is answered in the, in the answer which Peter gives to Jesus Christ is very important. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus Christ will reciprocate the answer or the gesture of Peter with also a very good answer. Simon, son of Jonah, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. This will be the first time Jesus Christ will mention the word church. The church for the first time in the gospel. The Greek word for the church, which is ecclesia, taken from the Greek Old Testament, where it is used for assembly or congregation of the people of God. We are invited to see Peter in this terms because the statement that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven, is an allusion to the first reading of today which is taken from Isaiah chapter 22, verse 22. He tells us that the prophet should announce that the keys of the house of David will pass from the hands of Sheba to his successful Eliakim, of which Eliakim will have the authority to open the doors and to shut them. And when he shuts the doors, no one shall open them. Peter also will be invited and installed as the chief servant of the kingdom of God saddled with the responsibility to, to own the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and also that whatever he considers that is bound here on earth will be bound in heaven, and loosed here on earth will be loosed in heaven. The church's doctrines also take its roots from this authority which is given to Peter, and part of this is also the seal of confession 
which forgives the sins of humanity once confessed to the priest, the priest who, who is the Christ, the priest who also acts in the person of Christ, forgives the sins of those who confess, and through this, the sins of those who confess are forgiven. Brothers and sisters, let us not forget that Jesus Christ exalted Peter, and his exalted mandate, which is given to Peter, notwithstanding, was given to the whole church also. Since we, the members of the church, participate in the ministry of Peter, especially the priests, the bishops, participate directly from the ministry of Peter, who also, which also has become an instrumentality of offering sacraments for the people of God. Brothers and sisters, the Lord made Peter alone whom he named Peter the rock of his church. He gave him the keys of this church and instituted him shepherd of the flock. The office of binding and losing which was given to Peter is also assigned to the College of the Apostles, which is the head. Today we have the Pope, today we also have the bishops, today we have the priests, we have the deacons who also participate in the ministry of Peter. Brothers and sisters, let us not forget in the haste also that when Jesus had caught the name of Peter, he also initiated into Peter an initiation into the life of Christ. When he caught Peter, he established the first stage of initiation of the leadership of Peter by saying that Peter was established in God's favor by calling him the rock with the blessing that you are Peter. And on the second note, by giving the name as an act of creation and baptism. It means that just as we are also given new names at baptism, we are also being made into new creatures. We are also being made into new, we are also being given new responsibilities as Christians and children of God. Brothers and sisters, today we stand on the church which Jesus Christ himself confirmed to Peter that on this rock he will build his church. Let us pray that our Holy Father will remain always as Peter was in failure. And let us pray that the church of Jesus Christ, founded on the apostles, we also continuously stand. And let us pray that he will continuously sanctify us and make us holy. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.